of our R-I-M spiritual principles. Week one, who can tell me what week one is, Charles? Honesty. Week two? Hope. Week three? Faith. And just as the Bible tells us we are the temple of God, these first three are foundation. We're working on building a foundation. And just like any foundation uh, for a house, once the foundation is there, now we start adding to it and, and building our house. So in week four, courage. courage. Courage will be our first wall that we put up on our house. Okay, so the spiritual principle for week four of courage is we made a searching and fearless moral, moral inventory of ourselves. What does that mean? Anybody want to say what that means to them? What does it mean to make a searching and fearless moral inventory of yourself? Good answer, Caitlin. It's absolutely right. It means to look at everything. So, so far, we have gotten honest with ourselves, which was week one. Came to the realization that a power greater than ourselves, which is Jesus Christ, is the only way to restore our sanity. That's week two. Made a decision to turn our lives over to God and become and became introduced to the Holy Spirit. And that would be in week three. Now we're going to start looking inward at ourselves with the help of the Holy Spirit. So I broke down the principle. I broke it down uh, with definitions of making a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Searching. Try to find something by looking or otherwise seeking carefully and thoroughly. Fearless, lacking fear. Moral, a person's standards or behavior or belief concerning what is and is not acceptable for them to do. Inventory, make a complete list of. So what I've done is I gave it. I'm just going to give y'all my version of me tying all that in together. So to sum it up, we are looking without fear inside of ourselves, carefully and thoroughly making a complete list of our behavior and beliefs with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know about y'all. This may be your first time. It may be your 50th time. You may be somewhere in the middle. But for me, this was one of the hardest things to actually do. When I was living in the world, you know, I put a mask on for everybody, including myself. I wanted to project myself in the way I looked to everyone else. I wanted to meet a certain standard. I wanted to look better than the mess that I was in. And in that, I also tried to convince myself of that. So having to go back and looking at these things and, and really digging into yourself Really digging into your character traits. Really digging into what it is that has made you. Uh, what it is, what personality you have. All these different things that make us who we are. But really digging into these things. It was very hard. It was hard to have to sit back and look and say, well, why am I this way? It was hard admitting to myself that I was even that way. Because I was broken inside. And being broken inside, I didn't want to be broken. I didn't want nobody else to be uh, to know that I was broken. I didn't even want to admit to myself that I was broken. But it was something that was very vital and very necessary for me to do to be able to continue my walk with God. Because without going back and doing these things, then I could never get the healing. I could never rise above. I could never overcome. 
So it was something that was very painful for me to do, but it was something at the same time that was very, very necessary. And so, how do we make this more inventory of ourselves? How can we do it honestly? Because the Bible talks about how there's nothing good that comes out of the heart of man. Nothing. So we will try to convince ourselves, just like I was talking about, we will try to convince ourselves something other than what we're actually facing or who we are. So the first thing we got to do is we got to get in God's manifest presence. This is achieved by prayer. We've got to reach out and pray. And, you know, I, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so I'll come back to that. But Matthew 6 and 6 says, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. This is the start of a relationship with God. To start any relationship, for me to have any kind of relationship with anybody in this room, there has to be levels of communication. We have to talk to one another. If Shane's my brother, someone use him for example, but if me and Shane didn't know each other and I just walk by and look at Shane every once in a while, he looks at me, we don't ever speak, don't know nothing about each other, we don't have a relationship. The same, same, same thing goes for God and Jesus and Holy Spirit. If we're not in communion with Him, if we're not spending time with Him, if we're not uh, talking with Him and having dialogue back and forth, you know, so that's a, a two-way street. If we're not having those times, those alone times, those private times, then we're not building a relationship. And God never wanted it to be a one-sided relationship. You know, I can look back on my life before. Um, you know, I grew up in and out of church. I never grew up just going to church always. It was typically I was invited to go someone or it was a vacation Bible school, whatever the case may be, and I would just attend. So, I mean, I grew up knowing the story of Jesus. And you could sit down and ask me a lot of this. And I, could, I had, I had a, a level of knowledge of the Bible that I could answer these things. I could tell you these stories. I could quote these stories to you. I wasn't real good at being able to quote exact scriptures, but I could tell you these stories. But in 2018, when I finally stopped running and said, okay, God, I'm tired of being this way. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of living a life not knowing where I'm going to lay my head at night. I'm tired of living a life of nothing but drugs. Looking, you know, if I had to be honest, that's what consumed my life. Was that next high. And all I was doing that was self-medicating. I was numbing so I didn't have to, so I didn't have to do an inventory of myself, whether intentional or unintentional. I would keep myself numb. So that's what consumed my life. Looking back on these things, I can see where, where God was continuously calling to me. God was continuously calling out to me. He was wanting this relationship. And I was the one kicking against it. I was the one who wasn't saying, okay, God, let me sit down and spend this time with you. I was the one saying, no, I don't have time for you right now, or no. I'm too full of shame, I'm too full of, full of guilt, I'm too full of fear to do whatever. But in 2018, I finally decided to turn my life around and change all that. At that point in my life, uh, you know, I can look back on it now and it's just so amazing. So amazing to see how intentional God was in my life. Like I said, I really didn't know where I was going to lay my head at night. I didn't have a steady home. I bounced from here to there. Uh, and then I ended up showing up to RI in commerce. And it changed my life. It changed my life. 
We was in a warehouse. It was like two or three weeks before we moved out of the warehouse into the building, into the storefront. And, you know, there again, I can even go back and, you know, kind of equate this to what I was saying about a relationship. I knew who Dustin Bonds was. I didn't know Dustin Bonds. I knew who he was by his brother. But I didn't have no relationship with him. Outside of maybe, hey, my name's Jody, nice to meet you, anything like that, I don't think me and, me and him had ever had a conversation. But Dustin saw me that day and recognized me. I mean, I knew who he was because the person that I was coming to RI R with knew him and, uh, you know, they told me who he was. So, I mean, I recognized the name. And we get there and go through service. I absolutely could not tell you what the service was about. Uh, probably 100% positive that I could say I was probably high when I went in there. But after the end of the service, I'll never forget that's a walking up to me. He's like, hey man, you remember me? I'm like, yeah, you're Justin's brother. He's like, yeah, I remember seeing you around, this, this, you know, just kind of talking back and forth. And one of the greatest things that I can think of happened to me in that moment. He looked at me and said, hey man, would you mind if I pray for you? I really didn't know what to say. But then he went on and he started speaking words of knowledge. And I was sort of like, you know, at this point, I'm like, how does this man know this about me? That's neither here nor there. Where I'm going with that is, that opened up lines for a relationship. I say that as an analogy for this. Dustin asked, did he pray for me? I said, yes. God wants us to have communication with Him. He's asking us to talk to Him. But it's up to us to say yes. I could have said no, turn around, walk out of that place. And I honestly believe I'd not be alive today. I was that dangerous with the things I was doing. Intentionally that dangerous. That's how broken and messed up I was. But just as Dustin had walked up and said, hey, can I pray for you? God is constantly, God was constantly calling out to me then. Said, hey, will you talk to me? Will you commune with me? Will you have a conversation with me? I have something better than what you have now. I have what it is that you're looking for. I have your way out. I have your freedom. I sent my son so you could have that. He died for you, and now you can freely gain access to every bit of this. It took me years to really grasp the concept of that. And again, I'll say this every time I sit up here. I haven't got it all figured out. It's still a work in progress. There's still things that I go through daily that I try to overcome. But I will say this by myself. I will overcome by the blood of Jesus. I will overcome because He only came first. He paved the way for me to be able to overcome. He paved the way for each one of you to be able to, to overcome anything we face in our lives. And it's the last verse in John chapter 16 is where he says that. He said, I overcome the world. So now we have the ability through Christ Jesus to overcome the world. Um, so... After we start building this relationship with the Father, that relationship leads into intimate moments with Him. That is building a strong relationship. That is building a true one-on-one -on -one relationship. Now, I know everybody's heard doesn't say it, and I'm going to repeat it. The world has the word intimacy messed up to meaning trying to mean one thing. And that's something that goes on, you know, behind closed doors. And there's a child in here, so we're not going to go any further with that. But intimacy is something, 
when it's broke down is it's, it's a close-knit bonding between two people. And, you know, I love those intimate moments that I can have with people. I love those intimate moments. I love moments like this right here where I'm sitting surrounded by people who I truly consider to be my family. But people who have been instrumental in changing my life, people who's been there standing by my side, and I can honestly say I've had intimate moments with them. I've also had those intimate moments with God, and there's nothing like it. There's nothing like those moments when it's just you and God, and He either breaks out or gives you a revelation on something. Or breaks out and calls you son or daughter. Or whatever it may be. It just takes things to a whole new level. But when we can be honest with ourselves. And with God, hope will form. Once hope forms, we begin to trust in God. Which produces faith. When hope and faith come together, true courage is birth. So when hope and faith come together, then we can come together and truly look inside ourselves. Because we have to have that hope first. That hope in something. We have to have that hope in something. For me, my hope was that I would no longer be caught in the life I was in. If I had to be 100% truly honest, my original hope was I could stop doing drugs. That was my 100% my, my hope. Little did I realize it wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. There was so much that was buried down deep, and I'll get a little bit more into this, a little bit further. Uh, that had to be, that had to come to service. So now we can begin to see how faithful God is. And how his thoughts towards us are of peace. Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the thoughts I have towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not in evil. To give you a future and a hope. I thought on that same verse two weeks ago when I done hope. It's my favorite verse. If I can put that in everything, I probably would. Love it. That was an intimate moment between me and God when he actually broke down a revelation. Of uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11 for me. It's actually Jeremiah 29, 11, 12, 13. I don't, it may have 14 in it too. I have to go back and read it. So, now, now we're ready to get down to business. Because we're fixing to start. Well, we're not fixing to start. But I'm fixing to give y'all direction on, on how to start. Put the rubber to the road. As Apostle Dustin would say. This is where the road meets the road. Now we're getting ready. With Holy Spirit, we are ready to do a life history. A life history. This is where things come in for me. For me to realize and me to understand that what I saw what the problem was, I was nothing but being blinded. I had a drug addiction. I had brokenness. I was caught up in fornication. I was caught up in manipulation. I was caught up in everything in this world. But it took my life history of me sitting down, thinking back to the three things that I can remember over the years. Three events that happened. I could not tell you if anyone knows me well enough to know I have no memory. Three things shaped my life. That was seeing my brother get run over by a car, being molested by another woman, being rejected by my father. Those three things shaped who I was. There was bitterness, anger, hatred, feelings of rejection, feelings of abandonment, feelings of just, I mean, just like I was worthless. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think of the exact language that I want to put here, but I had those feelings of I wasn't worthy of anybody. I had those feelings that I was undeserving of anything. I had 
all this stuff that had molded me into a very vicious, angry, full of hatred person that now I can understand why I wanted to self medicate. Now I can understand why it was that I wanted to get high. That was not justifying it. I'm not trying to justify it. I'm not saying, okay, well, this, this, and this happened to me, so it's okay for me to get high. That is not what I'm getting at. What I'm saying is, me getting high, me self-medicating, was my way of coping with the root issues. But going back and doing that life history, you know, it went from, uh, my brother was run over when I was four, I was molested when I was four, and around seven or eight is, is when the memory that really sticks out in my head was of my father uh, rejecting me. And I'm not trying to uh, put him down, beat him down, or, or anything of that nature. I'm telling you on my side. And all honesty, me and my father have started, my, me and my biological father have started having a relationship. And it's been a process to try to work through that. But I am not setting up here in any kind of way and trying to dishonor him. He done the best he could do with what he had to work with. I wasn't the only one that was broken in this situation. He was broken as well. And so when we go back and start doing these things and we start walking with God and we start walking with Jesus and, and we're listening to the Holy Spirit and allowing Him to guide us, we need to understand those things that we're holding on to, such as bitterness, if we have bitterness towards somebody else, we really can't blame them because they could be walking out of the same bitterness towards somebody else. The same things that had me broken inside, I know for a fact, had him broken. I just wanted to be, I guess, selfish. I wanted to be prideful. I wanted to feel like I was the only one that mattered. But I'm going to tell y'all what, one of the biggest freedoms I ever got was when the Holy Spirit gave me that revelation and asked me to pray for him. Now, if I sit here and say that it was easy for me to pray for him, I'd be lying to you. It was a process. But the freedom I gained from it was all worth it. Because I had to come to terms with, hey, he went to the same similar things. He, you know, he, he was never in drugs, but he drank. He is, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get into anything about him. I, I don't, I don't think that's fair on him without him being here. But he was just as broken, if not more broken than I was. And he was doing the best he could do with what he had to work with. So I still honor him. He's my father. I love him. Uh, God put me as his child for a reason. And to be honest with you, I know what that reason is, is so I can sit here and carry a testimony of how I walk these things out to bring hope to somebody else. I honor my father and so much, both my biological father and my heavenly father. So we're doing our life history. Uh, for me, the life history was like a road map. And, you know, I kind of broke it down into several different things there of how things played out. But I could go back and start tracking my life to find out where my brokenness come from and uh, just different aspects of my life. I could find out where my personality of being someone who likes to joke around come from. You know, it's not all bad. It's just easiest, easier for us to give the bad. But I can also see in things that I can remember, I can see the, you know, the good times too. I can see the times of laughing and cutting up. I can see the good times of, of being there when my kids was born. I can see the good times of, you know, whatever it may be. Whatever you hold dear in your heart, you can still see those good times. So don't let the bad times, uh, you know, overshadow that. We can go back with the help of the Holy Spirit and see the events that shaped us into 
who we become and even learn where the roots of our addiction or trauma come from. We can learn to identify our culture, our patterns, and our cycles that shaped us. Now that we are a new creation, we can learn, learn to avoid and overcome these things. This isn't always easy, though. This isn't always easy. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. Uh, I'm just going to go out on them and assume, honestly, that most of us in here has done a lot of history. I actually, if I was to be honest with it, I'd probably stop somewhere in my early twenties, and I might need to pick, pick that back up and actually finish it out. But it came; it's such a revelation to me that from about the time I was young to either right about the time I went to prison or right, right when I got out of prison, you know, I seen the, I seen a lot of answers. Don't do what I do. I mean, if you feel like you need to carry on with it, by all means, carry on with it. But I truly, truly, truly recommend doing your life history. And the thing about it was, when I done my life history was five to six years ago. Let me tell you, y'all, I stop. I've had a lot of life since then. I ain't completely fixed. Truth be told, I need to pick back up and, and just even if going back over the past four or five years. That's still my life, that's still my history. Because as I as I've overcome one thing in life, as I've, as I've broken my cycle or whatever pattern, whatever it may be, there's times other ones come up. So now I'm even trying to figure out where this one's coming from. So, uh, and this is coming off the worksheet. It says, this week we will begin writing our, out our life history in our notebooks. Think back as far as you can. Write out the good, the bad, and the ugly. Just as Brother Shane had said. This may take several weeks. And as you go, God may reveal more to you that you can go back and add. Take your time. Take your time. It's not a race. When you get done with it, you don't get no medal, you don't get no cookie, you don't get none of that. Take your time. Take as much time as you need. Now that doesn't see uh, that's not saying be lazy about it. But if you need to sit down, don't feel like, okay, because I'm gonna, if, you, if somebody tells me they're going to sit down and do a life history tonight and have it done by tomorrow, you need to do a life history. You just wrote some stuff in. It takes thought. It takes processes. For me, it took a lot of combating. Honestly. It took a lot of combating. Do I even want to write this down and put it on paper where somebody else can find it? Do I want people to know this about me? But ultimately, I come up with, well, I'm walking this thing out. It's not meant for anybody to find, but if they do, I will. So I started putting shame, guilt, and fear away to the side and, um, and writing things out. And that's when I got healing. That's when I got healing. Well, that was my road to healing. It didn't happen immediately. So take your time. Remember everything you want to tap, uh, want to tap out or feel condemned. That God is good and ready to forgive and keep going. Now we're going to go into Psalms 139, 23, and 24. It's one of our favorite verses. You know, uh, I'm just going to say the psalmist. I don't know for sure if this is one David wrote or not. So I'm just going to call it a psalmist. It says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous, grievous way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Okay. Is this David? Okay. 
So David, at this point, and this is the reason why I say this verse for last. At this point, I feel like David has already done his life history. He's already done his, he's already searched himself, made more inventory, and now he's taking a step further, saying, God, search me. If there's anything in me, let's deal with it. Let's bring it to light. I don't think David's being prideful and saying, oh, God, search me. You're not going to find nothing. I don't think that's what that means. I think David is saying, God, will you search me? Will you help me with this? Will you help me to make sure that there is nothing still inside of me that isn't like you? And for me, every time I do that, I get something else. And that's okay. There's a scripture that said, He which begin to do a work will continue into the day of Jesus Christ. For me, that scripture tells me from the day I was born to the day I die, I will be a continuous work. Until I meet God in glory, I'll never have it all figured out. I'll never be perfect. I'll never attain perfection. But now, as opposed to just knowing the stories, I do have a relationship with the one that was perfect. I do have an intimate relationship with the one who walked on this, on this earth in perfect life. And so, uh, Brother Shane printed out some papers for everyone. Uh, I think the top page is actually the worksheet. I want everybody to flip to the second page. Second, third, fourth, and I'll probably be the third. And I want to recognize DMI in this. This is not a original. This is something that was found that somebody else actually came up with. But this is something for me. I would say, I'm pretty sure it wasn't my first time because I was lazy. So I'm pretty sure it wasn't the first time. I went through the spiritual principles that I've done this. I would say second to third time that I went through the spiritual principles. And I actually took this sheet right here. And, and started comparing and contrasting myself with it. I would sit down and read out each one of these characteristics. And then I would search that out in myself. Like serenity. Overlooking our own needs and shifting the center of interest from ourselves to concern for the needs of those around us. Then I would go and I would search myself out. And I, I wish I still had that paper because I had all these little notes beside each one. And you can basically have a positive and a negative in these. My negatives was far, far more uh, evident. Than my positives. Now, yes, I did show signs of, of uh, overlooking my own needs for others, but at the same time, let's go down to self pity. Sulking, being moody and silent, using physical means to transmit feelings, strong sense of being of not being liked, feeling sorry for yourself, poor little old me, everybody hates me, nobody likes me. Yeah, I was good at that. I was good at walking around feeling sorry for myself. I was good at walking around and trying to justify everything in life saying, poor little old me. So with this, uh, what I'm trying to get at on this is y'all, I would, I would really recommend that you take these uh, sheets Use them to your advantage. Even if you've done your life, your life history. Even if you've already sat down and made it out. If you've never sat down and, and took these individually and searched yourself out with them, I would advise it. I mean, it helped me so much. It helped me so much to understand better of who I was. It gave me something tangible to look at. 
because I truly was trying to be honest with myself. If I, sat, if I found any kind of character defect as I was going through this, I wrote it down. Because I, I had come to the realization I had to be honest with myself. If I'm not honest with myself, I'm not going to be honest with nobody else. First of all, I'm not going to be honest with God. But in not being honest with myself, I'm fooling myself. So, and I actually might sit down and, and work these out again myself. Just because I know I don't have it all together. And people that are online going back and, and re-watching this, I, I truly apologize that I don't have a way to get these to you. Uh, but yes, if you do come to RI, we do this every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. I would be more than happy to make sure that you get one of these. And so that is all I have tonight. Uh, we're actually going to go into a time of sharing. This is very personal and very intimate amongst us. So we're going to take it to where it's not online anymore. But we would love to have y'all join us on Wednesday night and, and be a part of this. And with that, thank y'all. We love y'all. Have a good evening.